Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The Saipan Airport needs a major facelift, which is possible to happen soon. Also tonight, a new disease may be closer to our shores than we think. and a World War II artifact found and returned to the family. In sports, runners on their mark, get set and colored. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Sipping on a delicious drink from McDonald's may have you thinking, what makes these drinks just hit different? <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Cool off this summer with McDonald's Minute Maid slushies. Try the new Tropical Mango or returning favorite, Strawberry Watermelon, for a limited time. ba da ba ba, -ba. Today to the Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, August 1st, 2022. With a significant amount of money appropriated by the U.S. Congress for infrastructure projects, ports officials are taking this opportunity to address a longtime concern, which is the Saipan Airport. They are also preparing for a big visit from the Federal Aviation Administration. Take a listen. The Commonwealth Ports Authority are prioritizing the improvement for the CNMI's current airports. President Biden's Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act has allocated funds for terminal site improvements, which CPA Board Chairwoman Kimberly King Hines states is rare to see. We do know that um, there are funds out there now for terminal site improvements, and that normally doesn't happen uh, on a regular basis and so we are really excited about that. A lot of the funding are in the form of competitive grants. CPA will be seeking assistance from Shanetta Griffin who is the Associate Administrator for the Federal Aviation Administration. CPA's Executive Director Chris Tenorio states they are preparing for a huge visit from Griffin. We're actually working with our Honolulu FAA office. They're coordinating her arrival too, as well as us. Uh, so we're prepping for, or she will be arriving on August 8th um, in the morning. And then we have meetings with our board that morning. Then in the afternoon, we have meeting with the governor and other stakeholders. Griffin oversees the $20 billion allocated to airport projects under the infrastructure law. 
the airports. And so, you know, this is an opportunity to have a discussion with her about our priorities here at CPA, specific to the airport, obviously, is this ongoing discussion about what to do about the existing terminal, right? According to Heinz, the Saipan Airport is more than 40 years old and isn't up to date with the current federal requirements. Since the 9-11 attack, security at the airports have intensified. There is a requirement that, you know, you'd have the TSA component, um, you'd have to enclose and sterilize certain areas, right, the departure gates and all that. And so, you know, our infrastructure just wasn't built to accommodate those additional improvements. Um, and so it's kind of made the flow of the airport traffic within the terminal kind of not the way, not ideal and, and not efficient, right? And so um, the discussion that, that's being had right now is whether or not we should explore uh, fixing the existing terminal or building a new terminal and obviously that comes with a hefty price tag. Heinz will be deliberating with stakeholders on what the next step is. The seaport over at Tinian is also being considered for infrastructure improvement. And I think that interest stems from the fact that we do have a uh, DOD footprint there and you know we do expect additional footprint as we continue these discussions with regards to the CJMT. Uh, we do have di the divert training program uh, now that, that, that is ongoing, but there's another training proposal that's been considered. And so um, the port obviously is a very critical infrastructure to, to those projects. Director Tenorio states there is a long list of projects to be done in the ports. Tenorio would like to prioritize the audit and the runway. We have a lot right now, but the most important thing is the runway, right? because without the runway, an aircraft cannot land. So that's going to be our priority right now is the runway. It's the runway rehab uh, project. Biden's Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is worth $1.2 trillion for roads, public transit, rural broadband, airports, water and wastewater systems, and other capital projects around the nation. CPA, the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, and the Department of Public Works are some of the main agencies to benefit from this funding. CNMI public health officials are staying alert and on the lookout for a new disease spreading throughout the world, which is monkeypox. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation confirms there are no reported monkeypox cases in the CNMI. But while Guam health officials currently await the results of a suspected monkeypox case in their island, CHTC's epidemiologist Jennifer Dudek states officials remain on high alert. While there are currently no cases of monkeypox um, that have been reported within the CNMI, um, the CHC, CHCC is actively monitoring the situation, um, staying up to date with um, you know collecting how to collect samples, where to send them. Um, you know, testing and then um, just urging individuals in the community to recognize the signs of the virus. According to Dr. Lily Muldoon, monkeypox is a rare disease, part of the viral family of smallpox, and residents are highly urged to be aware of the symptoms. The symptoms of monkeypox include fever, chills, headache, body aches, swollen lymph nodes, but the most um, identifiable component of monkeypox is a rash. And this is a rash that looks like pimples or blisters that can appear on the face, inside of the mouth, uh, or other parts of the body, including the hands, the feet, the chest, and also is commonly seen in the genitals or the anus area, and has been confused previously um, for a different STD or sexually transmitted disease. The illness typically lasts about two to four weeks, and it's possible for people to have the rash and not those other symptoms at all. Modun states that residents are encouraged to contact their health provider for treatment information on rashes as they can be contagious. Monkeypox is transmitted very differently from what we're most familiar with learning about is COVID-19. Monkeypox is spread from usually just very close contact with somebody, somebody who has this infectious rash, scabs, or bodily fluids, and actually touching the rash 
causes you to um, potentially contract monkeypox. In contrast from COVID-19, people who have monkeypox symptoms cannot infect others. They actually have to have the physical rash itself in order for it to be contagious. CHCC will be able to test those suspected of monkeypox by sending a specimen to Hawaii. The results usually take about a week to confirm its status. Currently, CHCC does not have treatment for monkeypox, but they are able to avail of the vaccines if the need arises. So nothing too concerned to be alarmed about yet with monkeypox. We are not seeing it in the CNMI, but I wanted to do this public health announcement so that people can be aware of it. I'm sure you're hearing about monkeypox on the national and international news level. And be sure that the CHCC and our epidemiologic team are increasing our surveillance, being ready for testing, and trying to increase our vaccine stock load so that we are prepared if monkeypox does come to the CNMI. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation advises the general public of two upcoming power interruptions this week. Residents in the village of Dandan, specifically those behind the LZ market, should prepare for a power service interruption scheduled for Tuesday, August 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The purpose of the service is to perform system maintenance by replacing a rotted primary pole with an anchor. Water wells and wastewater facility are not to be affected. The second power service interruption for this week is scheduled for Thursday, August 4th. Residents of Capitol Hill are advised of the interruption beginning at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The area affected is the Farallon Place in Capitol Hill. The purpose is to replace a burned primary wooden power pole. Water wells and wastewater facility are not to be affected. For more information, you can call the CUC customer hotline at 670-236-4333. All right, coming up, archaeologists recover a military dog tag from the World War II over 70 years ago. Stay tuned. workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The events of World War II are told through findings and research. And on Saipan, one team adds another to the books. There is a lot of history on the grounds of these islands. And if you look closely, you learn more each day. 
the Infrastructure and Recovery Program recovers a World War II dog tag during an archaeological testing in the village of San Jose. Local anthropologist Kiona Torres tells us her story of retrieving a simple item with great meaning. We were actually um, screening that last trench and um, it was so funny because me and my other coworker or team member, um, we were actually looking for a specific thing. And so I wasn't really intended to see, you know, Mr. Stool's dog tag. But when I did, I looked up and I, I remember I, I saw Scott and I was just like, Scott, I think this is something. And I was like, it's pretty light. And so I gave it to him. And I think you, you kind of like spit on it, you tried to clean it <laughs> up, and then he found out that it, it had a name on it. And then we saw the US. At the time, it wasn't so clear, but then, you know, when we, we ended up cleaning it up, that's when our team started conducting the research on it. And I, I don't know, I thought that was pretty interesting. That's how I found it. Yeah. Torres, along with IRP archaeologist Jeremy Freeman and Scott Beerley, recovered the artifact in screen soil excavated from a backhoe trench located near the San Jose Catholic Church. Their team, working closely with a historian, then did a research that paints a picture of what happened when the dog tag was lost. We don't necessarily know how he lost it, but we can imagine yeah. what how it happened, you know, that they, they, he'd come in, I think, at 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. Um, it was after the first invasion, but probably, uh, they're, you know, still under a lot of heavy fire. Uh, so I, I think we, we can imagine that the, what would have been basically chaos at the time um, and being in that situation and how losing a dog tag would be probably pretty easy to do and probably wasn't really something he's going to spend some time looking for uh, <laughs> either. But but what it really did, and, and after after uh, after doing that research, it really kind of adds to the story. Research revealed that the dog tag belonged to William Conrad Stoll Jr. of the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. Stoll was a captain in the World War II battle and was the executive officer of the Marines' 5th Amphibious Tractor Battalion. His tag was found on the actual invasion beach where Stoll fought during the first three days of battle. After the battle on Saipan, Stoll participated in the invasions of Tinian and Iwo Jima. Stoll retired as lieutenant colonel in 1962 and passed away in 2008. The work of IRP's archaeologists have not only told his story, but adds another to the CNMI's history. I think the archaeology really adds to the story. It's like, uh, you know, it, it's one thing to talk about the invasion of beaches and, and where troops came in and, and what happened, but to actually find concrete evidence and a footprint of, you know, this person was here. You know, we know he came through here. He lost something of, of value and of, 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 of a personal value. Um, and, and it really says it adds to the richness of, of, of the work that, that we do. As archaeologists, I think that's one of the more rewarding things that, that we get to do. We, and, and sometimes we, we, get to, we get to handle objects that were misplaced, lost, um, intentionally forgotten. Uh, sometimes they've been there for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. And, uh, but what it does is it, it adds that humanity to the work that we do. Stay with KSPN as we bring you more with the IRP archaeologists. As the Marianas Business Pride Small Business Survey closes, those who participated are invited to attend an event that recaps the data. It's called the Friends of Business Summit, set for this coming August 10th. The summit will feature guest speakers with presentations and interactive booths that will open conversations regarding local challenges in the business community. Business owners will also be able to gain support services and grab the opportunity to expand networks. Seats are limited and those interested can register online at cinemaeconomy.com. The deadline for registration is August 5. For more information, you can contact the Cypher Chamber of Commerce at 670-234-7150. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next.
My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenos sports fans. a three-year hiatus, Pacific Islands Club Color Run is back. Ladies and gentlemen, half a day, 5K, 2022, the most colorful event in Saipan. We have 800 runners strong happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, at about 7.30, we will go our go time and the gun will be on the bank. 7.30. It was a bright and colorful Saturday morning down at San Antonio as over 800 participants joined the much-awaited Pacific Islands Club Half a Day 5K Color Run. This 5-kilometer course began at the PIC South Employee Parking Lot, heading north all the way to the Triple J Wholesale for the turnaround. Runners were sure to stretch well with a warm-up Zumba dance at the PIC Employee Parking Ground. Five different color stations were placed along the course to splash runners and walkers with a non-toxic bright color powder. And here are the highlights from this colorful event.
Proceeds from this event will be donated to the Elan Community Fund for its Saipan Community Projects. Golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. And for the KSPN weather report, partly sunny east wind 8 to 8 to 8 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorm east wind 9 to 13 miles per hour, high 86, 80, low 78, the humidity 89%. Tomorrow partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms, northeast wind 6 to 11 miles per hour, high 86, low 78. The marine forecast combined seas of 3 to 4 feet will build by an additional foot today, then diminish by a foot once again Tuesday. East wind 10 to 15 knots with, with occasional gusts to 25 knots, wind waves 2 to 3 feet, east swell 3 to 4 feet. The sunrise will be at 5.59 a.m., high tide at 10.57 p.m., low tide 4.10 p.m., and the sunset 6.47 p.m. All right, folks, there you have it. That is your Monday edition of the news, sports, and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday.